Hello and welcome to Geek at Play Studio. This is the seventh tutorial in our beginners series and we'll be talking about how to work with atmospheres and giving just a little bit of an overview of using the atmosphere editor. So we'll start with having a terrain and I think I want to edit it so I'll right click hit edit object and I want my brush to be in dig mode and I want it to be really big because I'm just going to make this all a little bit lower and I can right click and see if I like what I'm looking at here and I think I want it a little bit smoother so I'll erode diffusive a little bit hit that again and that looks good so I'll hit OK and now I have some nice rolling hills here but I think I want them flatter still so another way to do this is to just go in here click on it and not move it so I want to drop that back down but flatten it there so I just have a few hills there and then I think I want to add some trees so we're working with this terrain I'll right click load of material and we'll start with vegetation hit OK and then we'll edit that material now in our previous tutorial we worked with um, ecosystems and we picked out ecosystems that were already there and added a plant to an ecosystem but here you can actually take something that's not even an ecosystem to be begin with it's just here a simple material I'll click on ecosystem and I have a new tab pop up this general tab for ecosystems and here I have my ecosystem population so I'm going to add my plants to it which basically I just want a forest of some trees I'll have a some different colored trees I have a green maple, a yellow one just kind of a deciduous forest in the fall so now I have these three different kinds of trees and I will click on populate now if, if you see here I only have a few trees here and they're kind of big for my things so what I can do is I can scale down all the trees a little bit so I'll go ahead and do that I'll scale them down about almost a half of what they were and then I have this density tab and I want more trees there I want a whole forest so now I I change that I click populate mm, that's getting close let's increase that density even more decrease the scaling and hit populate and there now I've got a whole forest of trees so I'll click OK but now I want to see my trees so I'll go ahead and move my camera out and really what we're looking at here is our skyline but here's our forest of trees 
and here's our sky and now we'll go ahead and load in an atmosphere so you click on atmosphere load atmosphere and there's several we have this um, in our sunsets Cape Town that one brings in a sunset right into the the sun right into the scene there uh, Beaverton and if you notice up here there are some descriptions and some of them give you important information like this atmosphere is very slow to render why would the atmosphere be slow to render there might be a lot of dust and particles that they have put into the atmosphere that makes the um, calculation of it longer so and this gives us tells us we have four cloud layers volumetric to standard I'll tell you what that is in a little bit and so there's just a lot here interesting sunsets um, and we can just do this Cape Town for right now or maybe the heavenly don't know how long that takes to render and look at how that looks it's very pretty but we have some lens flares there I don't want to deal with the lens flares very much so let's choose the Cape Town see now we don't have any lens flares and you can kind of see the sun there a little bit now let's say though that that's not everything we want it to be we can change that atmosphere a little bit or a lot and here's our atmosphere editor and you see all these tabs um, and you see this is a volumetric model mostly and that's what we start out with and there's four different ways you can uh, put your atmosphere in and the standard model basically just kind of draws things in draws in some clouds you have some clouds and you can see when I change these you see an immediate effect and here we just it assumes the sky is blue some time of the day we don't really see the sun and we do get all these the sun we can actually change the sun color in this and there's several things we can work with here um, and we can work with this in all of them this is is very fast to render and so that's why it can be nice to work with a standard model and that's why sometimes you'll see clouds that a couple of the layers are in the standard model and some are in the volumetric or spectral models and these are just it's a different way that they calculate things um, and these two just take up more the spectral takes up the most amount of time to render but it gives you a very realistic and sometimes quite spectacular look and you can see how it's different in both of these and it depends on what you are trying to create which one looks the best but the spectral model has different kinds of uh, skies and colors and there's more dust it's calculating all the particles that could be in there and the light scatter in the ambient so that's why the spectral model takes longer environment mapping is just trying to match up if you have a backdrop or something matching up a backdrop and backgrounds with a uh, with your atmosphere here so we'll be working with these the most and this is a volumetric model and it's in between these two as far as rendering goes it's better than the standard model not quite as much as a spectral model so it's a good one to work with sun color is automatic unlike the standard model and that's the same with the spectral model too but the thing that's interesting is where the sun is so right now we can see that the sun is right in front of the camera right here where we can see it and that's our sun our light right there and you can change that with the azimuth and the pitch now the azimuth is just let's go in, into this window here and go out a little bit and here's our sun the azimuth is where the sun is 
in relation to the camera around it. So if I change that, it goes around. Now I want to see, you can see now, we'll change that back, what this does to the scene. Oh, we've got our pitch working there. We can't see it because we moved our pitch a little bit. There it is. You know, and there's about where it was. And our pitch is easier to see in our front view. It's up around, around, up, is it going straight down, is it um, uh, on the horizon almost, so that's what our pitch is. 90 degrees is straight down. We go all the way to 180. So we are at about 4 with this. There. So that's just how you change that. Our light, um, there's different models. You can, global ambience just gives you a little bit more spread of the light. Um, and, and this is kind of a whole nother different kind of a tutorial. Clouds are another tutorial. Fog and haze, you know, it's good if you just kind of play around with that. We have no fog now, thick fog. Look at what that does to it. So it's good if you just play around with what's going off. Haze, you know, and this is how you can get, haze is more like dust, fog is more like a, um, water uh, vapor in the air. So you can see they give you a slightly different effect and you can have higher pollution if you want. You can do a whiteout in a snowstorm. The glow intensity here, if we increase the fog, is say if you have a lot of light, it just makes the fog kind of spread that around a little bit more, scatter that light around a little bit more. Wind is um, good if you have a if you have a plant in here, it just kind of shows you how the plant goes. And here's a preview of how the plant might look. Um, sometimes in a still you might not want wind unless you're showing a windy scene because it doesn't really matter. But in an animated thing you might want the wind to be moving around. So and there's just a lot of different things you can do there. One of the best things to do is to play around with this. Uh, I'll go back here. Let's take our fog back down. We don't really want any fog. Light. You can have really bright light or it can be really dark. And if you just play around you'll see what that does. But one thing I want to show you is that these atmospheres, they really do affect how it looks. You know, notice here that we really can't see the trees very well. And we might want to see the trees a little bit better. So we might want to choose a different atmosphere. We have some here at Geek at Play. You know, we might want to use something more like a September sky. We'll hit OK on that. And you just have to practice and look around. Now we can see our trees a little better and we see these clouds puffing up here. Or the heavy summer can be a nice effect. 
And if you're playing around with an atmosphere and you like what you see, you can save it. See, now I can hardly see the trees here. We'll try out that sun rain. Like now we have some nice clouds in there and we can see our trees very well. So and if you do like an atmosphere, there's two ways you can save it. You can save the atmosphere you've got or you can go into the atmosphere and save it. Let's see what we've got here. Clouds. Sky the sun, you know, you can maybe move this sun a little lower in the sky, see how that affects that. So again, don't be afraid to go in here, play around until you get what you like. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. I think we'll do it in a final. And we'll render. Now you see that the final render takes a lot longer. But we'll let you uh, not have to wait for that. Okay, and now here we have our final render, and you can see how this lighting shows off our trees really nicely. We can see some shadows, there's some clouds up here, and um, it didn't take really that long to render. And the length to render really um, starts to affect you a lot more when you start to do animations and you're not doing one picture, but a lot of different pictures, and it can take a long time. Um, and this lighting, you can see how it comes from here, shows the trees off. And in our next tutorial, we will be talking to you a little more about lighting and about how the lighting affects your scene, how you can change the lighting, um, and improve how your uh, scene looks. Um, and just to give you an overall idea of, of how lighting affects things. So we appreciate you viewing this Geek at Play tutorial. We hope it has helped you. And if you have any questions or you need resources, uh, please visit us at www.geekatplay.com or www.viewtutorials.com.